this is the first time I'm going to see the paper just as if a child saw it um, this morning when they did the exam. All I know is there are some there's something that I feel like I should expect, which is a question for that is trash, but I don't know. We will see. So it's me going in blind. Um, let's go. So chances are it's late in the night and you're watching this past paper video hoping that you get the answers to the past paper that you've been looking for for all this time and you're happy that it actually exists on YouTube. Well, we'll leave it up to the YouTube algorithm to show you the rest of the um, answers. I have an app that's called Learn It by Make It Simple TT and it has all the past paper answers in chronological order for the past 10 years, maybe 12, depending on the time that you're watching this video. It might have a lot more. The app is called Learn It. Go find it, download it, link will be in the description. And if you want to see the PDF with the actual crap of foot handwriting that I have with the answers, so you could actually scroll through the PDF and look at the answers as it was written, instead of watching the video, hey, you could do that too. Download the app now. All right, back to the answers. Number one, direct data entry devices can transfer data directly from a document to a computer system. Thanks, appreciate it. Circle two direct data entry devices from the following list of web device. Okay, so you can transfer data directly from a document into a computer. So if it's going from a document into a computer, we have to choose the ones that two direct data entry devices. A barcode reader will be considered a document because it's a bunch of lines. And an optical mark reader because that's an actual document. So the barcodes will be like in all the lines that will, as basically like a document. And an optical mark reader is a page that has reads these spots on it like a multiple choice. So I'll say barcode reader and optical mark reader. Good. Name an application in which any one of the devices circled in APAD1 is used and describe the type of data that's captured uh, with that device. All right, so I'll go with both of them, just in case it was both. So if I say barcode reader, barcode would be um, grocery items. Um, and uh, the data that's collected from the barcode would be a product number. Because essentially a barcode is a number. If you could choose either this one or you could choose the next one. So if you say a questionnaire, no, no, it's a questionnaire. Say multiple choice exam. Say MCQ exam, it would read um, answers. No, yeah. The optical mark reader, sorry, in the OMR. What I want to say is OMR will be used for a multiple choice exam. OMR. Right, if you choose OMR, I'm secure exam, the data will be the student answer. Right. Toys and all that kind of thing, all that stuff, yeah, whatever. But the point is, it reads a, a particular number, a product number, some kind of thing like that, right? The OMR, it reads and marks from a reading marks on a paper. Turnaround documents are popular automated methods of data entry. Now let me tell you all about this one time. The um the list of topics said computer fundamentals. Computer fundamentals have input and output devices in it. Yes, that is true. Turnaround documents, however, is part of information processing. So they lie. I, I, I consider that a lie. Because if you have turnaround documents, that is actually part of the information processing part of the syllabus, not the fundamentals part. So in my view, they already misled the students with the um with the list of topics by putting turnaround documents in here. When the students told me about it, I was like, what? Nah, they, they mad. That's information processing. But nonetheless, um, you studied everything because I did say you have to study everything. Don't depend on the, um, on the list of topics too much. But yeah. So anyhow, there you go. Describe what is meant by a turnaround document. A turnaround document is a um, half, um, half the document. Why can't I write half? H-A-L-F. Half the document is pre-printed by a computer and the other half is filled out by a human right a turnaround document will basically have your name your address your blood type whatever, whatever. and then at the bottom will be like things that you have to check off yes no yes no maybe whatever 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 that makes it turn around faster because they don't have to fill out fill over all the information unnecessarily right so that's in 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 a sense that's what turnaround document is explain how data is captured from a turnaround document there are two ways you can capture data from a turnaround document you could use a optical mark reader um a optical mark reader to um scan choices or if you want to go you could see a ocr optical character recognition to interpret the letters 
written. So you can take either one of these. Eh? This is not this is not the whole answer. I just put in two possible answers. The easier one is the optical mark reader because you can think of it like a turnaround document will have all your customer information on top and then they will tick the boxes to show how much gas you use for the year or some kind of thing like that. That will be a turnaround document. If you go optical character recognition, you have to be able to say to interpret letters or handwriting that is written because you could have a turnaround document where you have to actually write on it in block letters and see. Yeah, essentially, right? So that's this turnaround document drama. I don't believe this four marks here was justified because they didn't say information processing would be um the information processing would be thing. I determined number of five megabyte documents that could fit into a 16 gigabyte flash drive. Oh, this is the this is the um thing that people say they needed a calculator for. You know, I'm not even sure if they tell you that you can't use a calculator, you know. Paper consists of four questions, write your answer in spaces, do not write any margins. If you need to rewrite an answer to use the extra page. They didn't say that our electronic calculator is, is bad. But I don't know if they tell you if you if you could use a calculator or if you cannot use a calculator. But I'm not too sure. But anyhow, five megabytes. Um five megabytes e cent basically means five um thousand. Yeah, the other do the maths. There's a way you could do this, you could average it off, and you could be like Five megabytes is um uh megabyte is uh a gigabyte is a thousand gigabytes so five MB um wait uh, I wonder if they already wanted to multiply by 1024 because really and truly um one gigabyte is equal to 1024 megabytes right I am um, not a hundred percent sure if they are wicked enough for two marks to, to make you multiply 1024 by 16 and then divide that by five that would be that would be real wicked because how are you going like why would you force people to multiply by 16. i want a sense i i i, I kind of feeling like they just wanted to divide 16 um 16,000 divided by 5, right? I feel that's what they wanted to do. Because it's 2 marks. Because you can average it off. 16,000. That's 16,000 megabytes. Because you're basically saying um, 1 megabyte is that, right? So 16,000 divided by 5. And if you divide that, you'll get 5 into 16 is 5 threes. 3. We mean no 1. And then you get 2. So you should get 3,200 here, right? Now, if you were to multiply 5 by 1024 and multiply 16 by 1024 and divide the 16 that you get by 1024 um, divided by 5 by 1024, you'll get the same 3200. But we basically round it down to 1000. I cannot see them getting vexed if you use 1000 to round off as opposed to the 1024 to do the calculation. I can't see them getting vexed at that. So, let me just say 3200 is the answer. But they clearly said show all working. If these people are wicked enough to make you have to multiply 16 by 1024 to get our large number that I'm not going to work out right now and divide it by 5 multiplied by 1024, then, well, I don't know. I don't know, right? So, you'll still get the same 3200. But, well, but yes, moving on. It's 2 marks. I'm really not going to spend all that time working, on, working out all that much just for 2 marks. Clearly, 3200 is the answer you're going to get. Alright. Consider the following paragraph. This is the word processing question. Um, a printer is an output device and a computer system used to print hard copy output. Yada, 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 stuff, stuff, stuff. State the steps in the correct order required to find the number of words in the paragraph above using a word processing program. You see, this, this, I can't handle this. Uh, no, I, I hate when they do this. How is the Ministry of Education in Trinidad, in Guyana, in Jamaica, in Barbados allowing CX to do this to us still? Let me tell you why, right? Just now. I need to I need to pause because I need to go in rant mode for this, right? Listen carefully. The syllabus of CSEC IT allows you to use multiple word processing programs. 
You could use Microsoft Word, you could use Google Docs, or you could even use LibreOffice or OpenOffice, or you could even use Pages on a Mac. All four of them have similar features, but all four of them have different ways of doing the same thing. So if I have to count the amount of words on a, um, on a word processing program, I could press a shortcut button on one application, I could have to go through three menus on another application, or I could right click and get on another application. And they want you to go through the steps required to get it done. But, and the steps have to be done in the correct order. That's wrong. Because for the child that has been using Google Docs for their whole life, the steps will be different. For the child that has been using Microsoft Word for their whole life, the steps will be different. And for the child that has been using Open Office, the steps will be different. I, I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. So the steps, I I'll, I would say, just go real generic. Yeah, just be real generic. Like, um, choose the count words menu. No. Before you choose the count, count words menu, essentially you want to say highlight the paragraph and then choose the count words menu click count words cool i don't know that is all i could tell you that is all i think i will tell you i know for sure you had to highlight the paragraph if you don't highlight the paragraph because this is a section you end up with a problem right um yeah so next thing now is list the steps in the correct order required to conduct a spell check on the paragraph above you see this in the correct order to conduct a spell check I could, I could do a spell check by pressing F7. I could literally press F7 and I will do a spell check. I don't have to do any steps. On Google Docs, it even worse. Like you could just do a spell check by clicking one thing and it will find it. So for three marks, how are you going to unmark me depending on the software that I use to tell me that I am wrong on how to conduct a spell check? I can't. I can't agree with it. I can't agree with it. Like everybody knows, like most people would use Microsoft Word. That is okay. With Microsoft Word, you click review, go to spelling and grammar, S P E L L I N G and grammar, and click spell check. Right, that's on Microsoft Word. But Google Docs is different. There's a keyboard shortcut that, that does it too. And the real problem is, all your, this is what your SBA is for. This is what the paper three is for. The SBA is to prove that you can do practical things. It's really unfair to come in the um, in the paper two and make you write down the steps to do something that is practical. I just, I can't live with it, boy. So let's go again now for part E. The following diagram illustrates the dialog box obtained when using the find and replace editing feature in a word processing program. To replace all occurrences of the word print with the word produce in the paragraph. Briefly explain why it'd be safer to use the find and replace option rather than replace all option in the dialog box above. Why would you want to use this instead of that? Um, really? Why would you want to use replace, replace all occurrences of the word print with the word produce in the paragraph in here? Briefly explain why it'd be safer to use replace option rather than the replace all option. Okay. All right. The replace option would replace only in the selected paragraph while while what by replace all would replace in the whole document I don't understand why the children tell me this thing was weird They came out and I was like, sir, this weird, it, it weird. And I, I think I, 
think I understand why. Briefly explain why it would be safer to use the replace option rather than the replace all option in the dialog box above. The diagram illustrates that are obtained when using the final replace editing feature in a word processor program to replace all occurrences of the word print into. In the paragraph D on page 5. So you want to replace it only inside that paragraph. But this question. No, this question has some issues. Briefly explain why it's safer. Essentially, you would you replace would replace each one one by one. Every time I click replace, it will replace one by one, piece by piece. Um, replace all would replace in the whole document. Okay, it's two marks, so we'll see how that goes. Outline the steps needed to replace all occurrences of the word print with the word produce using replace all option in the uh, Outline the steps needed to. Now I'm concerned. Why would it? Why would they want it to? <laughs> Outline the steps needed to replace all occurrences of the word print with the word produce using replace all option in the dialogs. Okay, step one type the word. And define what? Then type into and then click replace all. That is what I want. Okay. Type the word print in the find section. Type the word replace. in the what's the next section in the replace with section why did you vote a whole question to you listing out how to do things practically with a final new place you know and the hard part about this is that there's some children who never saw final new place in microsoft word and only certain google docs will watch this and be like what i thought it tell me i could use any word processor i want how is the Ministry of Education in Trinidad, in Guyana, in Jamaica, in Barbados, allowing CX to do this to us still? I could understand how this question would bamboozle students. I could fully understand how this question would bamboozle some students and they'd be like, what? I think I know what I'm saying. I, I believe so. It's kind of, more than likely that's the answer that they're looking for. But you're definitely going to leave this question asking yourself, what just happened? What just happened? Yeah. Like I spent all my time doing a practical to, to come and explain with words how to do the practical. I don't I don't find I don't find this fair. I don't find this fair at all. Honestly, this this is not fair to students. Having to write all these steps to do something practically when you already have a practical component to your syllabus that you did already. I don't find it's fair. But okay.